Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So earlier people asked for a tutorial of this animation which turns out to be today's topic. The most initial reference of related animation I think came from a post on the Instagram and people did the tutorial in Cinema 4D. Today I'm going to do this in Blender using animation nodes. The detailed reference may be posted in the description once I find the exact source. Another thing to mention is that the techniques of this animation can be expanded for other derivatives and I will discuss later in this tutorial. And uh, let's start. So let's briefly discuss the principle of that animation. Is uh, first we need to generate a target geometry, and uh, which in the animation is kind of wavy patterns. Uh, it's obviously more smoother, but a basic kind of idea. And uh, when looking at such kind of pattern, we need to think about the sine wave. Uh, and uh, let's hit Control A and search for float mass, and then let's turn that into sine. Because we're going to generate multiple points to form a curve object, uh, then we need to combine vector. I probably will distribute the sine waves on this y-axis, so let's put that into y. And uh, because we need multiple points, so let's use a float range to input multiple points. So let's briefly discuss the sine waves. So basically sine waves is like uh, these kind of repeating patterns. And that's why it will make kind of a zigzag um, kind of shape. It basically range from positive 1 to negative 1. And it will cycle through the 2 pi, which also, which also means 360 degrees. And then it will repeat uh, over and over again between 1 and negative 1. So what it does mean is uh, if you take a look with the vector that we have been generated. So even now we have just the five points and uh, in the space, but it's already looping throughout. And, and let's increase the amount. And if you increase the, so let's change the type to stop because I think it's more clearly about what we're actually looking at. The next thing is just the going back and forth. So even if you increase the amount or if you increase the stop, it's just the going back and forth. If you would like to change the entire magnitude, then you just need to duplicate this both mass and change the type to multiply. And then let's multiply 5 so that it goes from positive 5 to negative 5. So this is the idea. Next step is I'm going to add a Z axis so that to move all these points up and down. So I'm going to duplicate this point and I'm going to put the list into amount so that if I'm changing the amount here, the amount back there, it will also change. I'm going to put this list to Z. So now each point has been subjected to, to a point to elevate themselves. And if I crush this stop down, then I'm forming the patterns of this kind of zigzag. So now we have enough points and then next step is to generate a curve object so let's take a spline from points and the smooth space spline also a curve objects output these three nodes and i'm going to connect them into series put the splines into splines put the vectors into points and let's activate the splines add some bevel depth and add the target so now we can see all these points has been connected and a a spline has been formed. But uh, for it, to make it more like kind of cloth, I'm going to extrude that. So I'm going to hit ends and go to M panel and there's an extrude. I'm going to activate extrude and uh, increase the value. And now you can see the extrude, but it's the direction is kind of very weird. So to do that, I'm going to rotate that 90 degree. So I'm going to use the tilt. So I'm going to change the value like to 1.57. The reason that this number works is because, as I said earlier, that the 2 pi is 360 degree. And we are going to rotate 90 degrees, which means we are going to um, pi divided by 2. And the pi is about 3.14. Uh, so finally, it goes to 1.57, something like that. Uh, it's, if you want like, a super accurate number, then you can just uh, type a pi divided by 2. Ah, a pi divided by 2. So this is the basic idea. It's still 1.570, 1 so negligible difference, and so on and so forth. There is a, a kind of, um, how should I say, the, the cap. It's not a capping itself. 
if you would like to cap it, then unfortunately uh, you cannot use this method. However, so let's uh, go to geometry, uh, and you can see there is a few caps, uh, and it's uh, this option is not working. To really fix that issue, that you need to use the bevel object instead of bevel depth and extrude. In, and if you would like to bevel this object, then I suppose you need, can use the bevel object here. But you can also use that directly, it does not really matter. But basically that's the idea. I'm not going to detail into this bevel object, but I suppose you understand how it actually works. And I'm going to use the bevel depth to change the thickness and extrude to change the, the length or width, something like that. So this is it. So if I'm crushing this, this is stop value, then you can see we got a kind of cross packing around. And it's, it's a, this is a value that you can potentially play with. Just also be aware that the smooth value determines how much bulbs it will form on the edge. So you can decide that it actually forms a lot of bulbs or a, just a tiny little bit. Another thing that defines the irregularity of this entire setup is actually the resolution, which tends to be the amount of points you generated. And the reason I use the stop is because um, the stop determines the length. And basically these are a kind of idea. And uh, also one thing you can find that this, um, this spline starts from zero because this is the nature of the sine wave that I showed you earlier. So in this case, I would like to make this entire wave starting at one. Uh, I'm going to change the sine into cosine. So now you can see it works perfectly well. The reason is because cosine is basically just a sine wave that has different phase. The difference is about 180 degrees, so it starts at 1 instead of 0, something like that. So basically this idea. So now we have generated the target points. The next step uh, is to talk about how to actually make this cloth falling down. Just to show you an example, by animating this stop, then we are seeing the lifting and we are seeing the falling down. And we this is one way to do the animation, but it's not kind of ideal. The reason I think is because all these points being generated are going together. There is no sequential event that occurs. For example, the first point falls more, and the second point falls a little bit, and you get a kind of gradation of the kind of waving pattern, uh, as you have seen from the animation. The way to do that, there are many different ways to do that. Um, but I'm going to use a way which is probably the best and the more general to all kinds of animation that's available for different derivatives. And I'm going to select this node, hit W, and uh, go to right to loop through vectors. And within iterator, I'm going to hit this plus icon and add another vector list. I'm going to name one as initial, and the other as target. The reason I generate a loop is because I'm going to use a node which is mix uh, vectors. The mixed vectors, however, cannot receive multiple inputs. So it does not actually work. It will generate whatever other things that you don't necessarily care at this moment. So this node essentially what it does, so if you define A and B, then by changing this factor, uh, the zero is A. If you change that to one, then it's B. If you go beyond the zero and the one, then it will go to the extension line between these two points, something like that. Uh, and I'm going to put initials into A and the target into B. The reason now this works is because uh, this loop will be run several times. And so you input a list and within each loop it will only input a single element from this list. So finally this mixed vector will run through all the initial and targets. And that's the basic idea. I'm going to hit this plus icon and plus, uh, take a vector list. So we are going to output this vector list. So use the new vector list to replace the old vector list. And then now the target has been disappeared completely. This is because that we haven't defined the initial list. So the iteration of this loop is turns to be zero. 
And to define the initial list, there are many different ways. In this particular case, I think I'm just going to use the same sign function, actually called sign function, but I'm going to use a new float range and put the height. I'm only going to change the stop maybe to 10 and put the vector into initial list. So now you can see by changing these factors, we get the, exactly the same results as we did previously. So why am I actually doing this? What I'm going to do next is to make each initial and the targets have a different factor so that you can see kind of more kind of gradation of the effects that occurs. And I'm going to use a fade forth. Fade forth is a kind of, I think it's kind of more weird term. I don't know why it's called such a name, but what it does, it um, evaluates the, the a list. So if I have five points, uh, and the fade forth will affect the first point the most, the second point a little bit less, and the third point a little bit less, and the fourth point even less. And then if by changing this uh, starting index, then finally they will all reach kind of this point with this fade forth, something like that. And uh, we're going to evaluate forth so that we're going to change the forth into a number which can affect this factor. And because this fourth is a fourth that's used to affect its list, so I'm only going to care about the index. And the index is readily available in this loop. So I put the strength into factor and nothing occurs. Uh, next thing we need to do is to define the amount. So the amount of points is 50s. And this 50 has been passed down as a list and to define our vectors. So and finally, this vector goes to the our iterator. So our iteration have about the 50 times. So it can be used as amount readily available. And the start index will be better if it's a negative 50s. So now it goes from this initial list and by goes to 50s, then we go to our target list. So this is how it works. And now this does not seem to be too exaggerated. You either change the stop upstream, or there's actually a better way, I suppose, is to actually affect these values. So that uh, this factor will go to be super negative, like a negative 16. So it will go extension line from the a and uh, from the line at a and b something like that you can you can test it by yourself but it's basically the idea and uh, by animating uh, actually not so now we have this kind of shapes so let's uh, animate this to put an end value to be more exaggerated and by taking this start you can see how it actually looks you can see there is a gradation of the effect. So some of the points goes to the target while the other points does not. And then finally, everything goes to the target. And this is what essentially occurs in our animation. To make it nicer, you can potentially increase the resolution of these amounts. If you would like to increase the irregularity, then you just uh, decrease the resolution. So it depends on what kind of thing you finally would like to make. So these are values that you can essentially change. And this is a completely procedural setup. So up to this moment, basically this animation has been done. You just need to animate all these factors. And definitely I would suggest you to put all these values into the parameter so that these values are readily reachable in the loop. So let's basically do that, the end value. I think this is it. So uh, to wrap up this entire animation is uh, several things, in, basically two things you need to consider. The first thing is what's the target and what's the initial to generate. So now we generate such kind of class patterns, uh, waving pattern, whatever. But it does not limit it to such kind of thing. It can be anything. So both the initial and the target can be any, any things that you can consider. For example, let's generate a random vector. Uh, let's put the end value to zero so that it's more easier to see. 
And I'm going to put this random vector into a list. Use the get list length setting to counts and uh, use that to initial. Let's turn the extrusion to zero. So now it's just like have whatever weird stuff. It's also possible to take a vector mass and put all these things up. And now uh, here's the thing that will occur. So if you change this start index, you can see everything finally goes back to our initial spines. So this is one way that you can potentially animate such a things if this is what you're looking for. At some point, I think this is also kind of interesting thing. And of course, you can go backwards for the random vector or other things. Another thing is that um, as soon so finally, it ends up the way that you are going to generate geometry. For example, in the past, I've made a preset which is called a spiral. In my expanding helix tutorial, so put the resolution into that. I'm going to use that as a target. So now it goes from random, and finally, I'm generating a spiral shape. And I can change these end angles. So we have a kind of tornado being formed. Or you can make it a kind of icing. Uh, let's um, negative 10, negative 5. So this is something that you can potentially do um, as a kind of uh, icing of the ice cream or something like that. Uh, just the inverted list. Reverse list. Then let's see how it will actually work. So now we're trying to make kind of icing. So this is also a way that you can potentially do with ice cream or whatever stuff that you can imagine. Another thing is um, in the last tutorial, I've made a not a generator. And we can put the resolution into the resolution, of course. So now it does not seem to anything. But uh, what you can potentially do is just to change uh, these uh, numbers to make it uh, 6. Five, then you generate weird splines from a math function, and this can be a 3D setup. So I don't know what you can actually generate, but the flowery patterns and so on. And you can also do this kind of falling down with these kind of things to generate a mass. But in that case, I recommend the resolution to be a little bit high. Something like that. that uh, it's something that you can essentially play with. I don't have uh, too much of opinions about how you can actually play with that. There is a formula provided in that tutorial as well. So you can essentially finally uh, again play with that kind of things. So second thing I wanted to talk about is actually the fade off. Um, so now we use a fade forth because it, it can be applied to any kind of sequence. But it's not necessary to use a fade forth. You can use other forth like object controller forth. But in that case, it will evaluate location or metrics instead of a list. So the index is no longer necessary, but you need to put the initial location to locations. And the strength still goes to factor. And the forth goes to forth. Uh, there are many other tutorials talking about such kind of animation. I'm not going to do super details. Or you can know more about all these nodes from the menu. But uh, basically, that's the idea. Uh, I personally still prefer Fade of in this particular case. But it's basically kind of idea. And uh, that's it. So, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.